guys, welcome to DJ vs Food Home Cooking. And the first recipe we're going to do at home is a recipe that I found when I was in Las Vegas at BB King's restaurant. It's his spare ribs. They are sensational, they really are. So I'm going to run you through the ingredients. First of all, the cuts of meat. Now this recipe is good for beef or pork. I've got pork in this case. And the recipe does actually ask for two pounds of pork loin ribs. Well, the cuts in Britain are slightly different, especially this time of year. So what we have is uh, singled out spare ribs here and also we've got some of what we call uh, the streaky cut here which uh, off the bone it's basically what your, your bacon would be. I have, I have had to work out some of the differences between some of the items called for on the American recipe compared to what we can get in the UK. The first thing it says seasoning salt. Now seasoning salt doesn't really mean an awful lot here. But we use a lot of this celery salt in the UK and it is used as a, a seasoning agent. So we're going to go for that celery salt. Garlic granules, it uh, definitely asks for those. Onion granules, it actually says onion powder but basically the same thing. Ground cumin. Now I'm using mild chilli powder, if it was just for adults I would probably go for hot chilli powder, something with a bit of punch and probably put a bit more in. It's actually asking for half a cup of chilli powder, well, you know, this isn't going to be half a cup, but for this recipe we're going to start with this, Worcester sauce or Worcestershire sauce, soya sauce, I tend to go for the dark one, it's got a bit more flavour. Now another thing that it asks for is a firmly packed brown sugar well that doesn't mean anything in the UK I would have thought they probably meant dark brown sugar but uh, I'm going for light brown sugar because sometimes I find that dark flavor a little bit too overbearing so anyway we're gonna go for that it asks for also some canned tomato sauce well that again doesn't mean an awful lot in the UK so this is sieved tomatoes passata so we're gonna go for that with some chopped tomatoes in juice and this is just a cheap packet and that's about it so uh, it's in two parts it's in a, a dry spice rub that we're going to put on the meat and a sauce that we're going to cook up let's do the, there, the dry spice rub starting with uh, it's asking for one cup of chili powder now as i said i've got kids eating this so we're not going to go quite as crazy as that i'm going to use one of these this is a mild chili powder Sound a cupful, I think this is going to be plenty for that. A tablespoonful of garlic granules, so uh, a teaspoonful of onion granules. Half a teaspoonful of cumin, ground salt. One half of, sorry, two tablespoonfuls of this. It sort of makes sense really because you want to. I'm going to give that a bit of a mix up. This can be made well in advance and kept in the cupboard in a, in a screw top jar. And all I'm doing is basically going over it, rubbing it in. I'm not going crazy with it, but uh, no, I want to really coat it. Finishing that, so we have the boneless belly pork here and the spare ribs covered in the marinade, the dry rub. Now they're going to be wrapped and put in the fridge for anything between four to six hours or you could do it overnight. while the ribs are marinating we're going to put together the sauce now and it's literally fried it in a slow cooker because it's a lot easier and safer if you're leaving it but you can do it in a saucepan with a lid on no so ask for some fresh tomatoes but we're going to go for some chopped tomatoes in tomato juice wow it looks like tomato sauce doesn't it uh, here's the sugar be putting the, the link with uh, the full recipe at the side there so you can go through this or I can send it to you if you want to contact me there's no problem from my point of view also there. asking for some of that dry rub about half a cup full in there and I'm gonna give that a stir right I'm gonna put it on and we'll see what it's like in about three hours right the ribs are come out the fridge the colour of the meat has actually changed. It's been about three, four hours, four hours really. And just do it in the normal oven. Now what you could do then, if you just got a normal barbecue, is finish them off on the barbecue. 
Uh, I'm not even going to do that today. But uh, anyway, I'll load it up. It smells it's absolutely sensational. Bear in mind, this is just a dry rub on here. And really, what I'm looking for now is tenderness and how well cooked they are. I'm just going to get a fork and a knife. This is just a little test, really. Just look, look, you can see, see how the meat is just falling away. That's on the boneless. And so we have the sauce that had cooked for about three hours, very dark now. We have the meat that's pre-cooked also for three, four hours, I think I said. So that's soft and ready to go. And all I'm gonna do, let's do a little rib to start with. I'm gonna dunk this. Now, if you didn't want a load of sauce on that, you could brush this on, but it's not clinging too bad. And I'm just putting it on an old rack tray. Okay, so the ribs have been uh, taken out of the foil. They're well cooked. I've dunked them all, so sauces on. And uh, now if you had a bigger oven, a bigger uh, tray that you could put them in, I think that would be ideal. But hey, look, sometimes when you cook at home, it's all about improvise. I've decanted the sauce, what's left of it, into a saucepan. Now you could thin that out. You could put a little bit of Jack Daniels in or whiskey or a little bit of whatever the alcohol is you like. But I'm just gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna warm it through and serve that on the side as an extra sauce. And uh, Really, the next time you see it, I'll lay it out. Ready what for what to have with these ribs? Well, as one of the sides, I'm going to do like a coleslaw, but it's a ranch slaw. Uh, not a lot in it, very easy. Just get a, a white cabbage, or your preference if you'd rather have red, that's fine. All right, so the only other thing that we're adding to this, vegetable wise, to the cabbage, to the white cabbage, is carrot. I've put a slightly different, it's a bit messy now, but a slightly different attachment so it does very thin so julienne. Yeah, All this is is white cabbage and carrot in a dish, sliced up very finely. It says you can add onion, you can add mayonnaise at this point just to make a regular coleslaw. I'm going to use ranch and it's only bought ranch, but this is one of my favourite ones. But really you could use whatever you wanted at this point. Now I know in the States you have a tradition of really dressing, wet dressing the salad, mixing it all in. In the UK, this would be quite common, just laying it over the top and as you're serving it, it's naturally mixing in, but as it's really an American style meal, I'm gonna turn it over. I don't like too much dressing. I think some coleslaws, or in this case, ranch slaw, they overdo the dressing and that's all you can taste. I just like a coating. Here now we put the meal together. We got the belly pork, we got the spare ribs. We've got extra sauce at the back here. We've got the ranch slaw with the bacon bits on the top. We've got the potato skins, the cheesy ones in the middle as a side, and some corn as well. We'll find out in a moment. It's not that complicated. There's quite a lot of ingredients you've got to put together, but you can prepare a lot of it in advance. I would say it's probably going to be better on a charcoal grill to finish it off instead of in the oven. But um, I've nibbled a little bit and it tastes fantastic. Anyway, until next time, to the next recipe. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to post the recipe here, if you want any questions answered, please feel free to uh, contact me. And uh, being I'm here in the UK, this was my tribute to America and to BB Kings. America on the plate, spare ribs. Next time it'll be something British. So, uh, peace and love.